Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to walk through Cisco Packet Tracer Activity 8.3.3.5 titled Configuring Basic OSPF V3 in a Single Area. And to start we'll want to open up our Packet Tracer Activity for this. I'm going to go ahead and have my addressing table open over to the side here. I am going to go ahead and do a quick reset just to make sure everything's cleared out and fresh. and then we can go ahead and get started. Um, the scenario for this is that we have this network and we're going to act as the administrator for it. The IPv6 addressing has already been set up for us so we just need to configure the three routers with a basic single area OSPF v3 and then we want to verify connectivity between our end devices, our PCs. I'm going to go ahead and give this a fast forward time, give everything plenty of time to boot up and initialize and then we'll go ahead and get started. Our configuration for the OSPF on all three routers, we need to have IPv6 routing with a process ID of 10, assign a router ID for each router, and then enable OSPF v3 for each interface. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with router 1 here, and jump into the command line interface. Alright, get up to the global configuration mode, and we first want to enable IPv6. So we do IPv6 unicast routing, then we give the IPv6 router OSPF with the process ID of 10, and it tells us it couldn't select a router ID, so that's our next step is to give the router ID. So for router 1, it's 1111. Um, with OSPF v3, we don't have to go in and set up the networks or anything like that. It'll be pretty good at kind of auto-detecting that, but one thing we do want to do is to clear out the OSPF processes just so it knows to start fresh. So we'll give the clear IPv6 OSPF process and we want to say yes. So it'll kind of reinitialize the whole OSPF v3. Our next step is to enable OSPF3 on each interface. So we'll start with our gigabit, our local LAN for this network, which is connected to gigabit zero. I guess it would help if we were in global configuration mode. Then we can get into that interface to do this. And it's just IPv6 OSPF10 area zero. I, mean, I want to do the same thing for our serial interfaces, for both of them in this case. Zero, 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 IPv6, OSPF10, area zero, and interface S001, IPv6, OSPF10, area zero. And so that's it. That's all you have to configure on the router for OSPF v3. So we'll go ahead and close router one jump into router 2 and we're going to be doing pretty much the same exact stuff we will have a different router ID so let's go ahead and get started IPv6 unicast routing router OSPF 10 couldn't pick up an ID automatically so we want to manually assign an ID Then we'll do end and clear OSPF process. Sorry, clear IPv6. There we go, OSPF process. Say yes. And then we can jump back into global configuration and go and set it up on each interface. S000, same thing. and serial 1. Sorry, that command got kind of jumbled up there with that uh, the message that came in. So I'm just going to go back into serial 001. And we'll do the same thing. IPv6, OSPF10, 
area zero. That way you guys can see the whole command. And we're done there. So let's go ahead and hop over to router three. And again, more of the same. Global configuration, IPv6, unicast routing, IPv6, router, OSPF 10. Couldn't pick up the ID again, so manually assign router ID. And then we want to end and clear OSPF processes. Clear IPv6. I don't know why I keep forgetting that. Process, not processes. Tell it yes, and then we want to come back to the global configuration and set it up on all of our interfaces. IPv6, OSPF 10, area 0. This time I'll wait a second and see if that message comes back in. There it is. <coughs> and our last interface for OSPF at least, 10, area 0, and it should also come up with the same message. And so we're seeing these messages as we get everything set up. Um, I'm going to move that out of the way for a second. When we first set it up on R1, we didn't see those messages at all, because we hadn't set it up for our other routers. So R1 was trying to initialize that OSPF um, type of connection between the routers, and the others weren't set up for it so we didn't have that message that it was done loading to full. Um, once we had R1 configured and we set this interface up on R2, that was the first time we got it because both routers were ready for OSPF across this connection. So seeing those is actually a good thing and it's fine. Um, so we're good with that. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that OSPF routing is operational. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in R1. You can do it in all three of your routers if you'd like. And we just want to give the show IPv6 route command. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Go ahead and get everything listed out here. <coughs> there we go. And so therefore I gave the command. Here is kind of your little legend or your key. It tells you what all these abbreviations on the left stand for. And here's all of our networks, either directly connected or received from the other routers. All right, so that looks good. You can go through and verify each one of these networks if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and move on. I don't want to spend that much time just looking over routes. Um, you can do the same thing for router 2 and router 3. Again, that command was just show IPv6 route right here if you want to do that for the other routers. Um, the last thing for this activity is to verify connectivity. Um, you can go into each PC's command prompt and ping across that way. I'm going to do a simple PDU just because it's a little bit faster. Um, we have success from PC1 to PC2, success from PC1 to PC3, and success from PC2 to PC3. So we have network communication across all three of these LANs. So all of our routing it looks like it's set up properly. Um, to verify th that, over on our addressing table instructional documentation here, we can hit check results. And it shows that we successfully completed it, check the assessment items, and our network is set up correctly. Um, all three connectivity tests are successful for 100%. You can view them individually here. So that's probably PC1 to PC2, PC1 to PC3, and PC2 to PC3. Alright, I think that's pretty much everything for this activity. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And I'll see you all in my next video.